water stopped, the GPS lost signal, none of the gauges worked, we had no wind instruments. I would give up all this stuff if I knew that the autopilot worked. What the hell is that? Uh, times are kind of tough out here. It's like something melted. Ah! We're going crazy over here. How many times have I said that? Did I tell you it's yeah. been tough? Did we mention it's been tough? Yeah. Chiapas, finally, huh? We finally got our weather window. We got uh, the last grip from Predict Wind this morning. And the main thing we got to watch out for is the Tuanapec breeze, which generally, like this right here, is the Gulf of Tuanapec. And the wind from the Caribbean sort of gets compressed by the mountains here. And it can be sometimes two times the normal forecasted wind strength. So it says it's going to be 20 knots and it can be 40 knots. Uh, we have a good forecast across that and it looks like we're going to be able to jump straight across instead of keeping one foot on the beach like some people have to do. A uh, course of 283 degrees for 220 miles to the next possible anchorage. And if the weather is good, I think we should just carry on and make as many miles as we can. Uh, we have eight knots of wind, not a whole lot, but we can get up some sail and just Off we go. do our best. A bonito is also known as a skipjack tuna. It is edible, however, it's a very fishy, strong tasting, and dark meat, and not something we really enjoy. In the past, we've made fish curry with it, but since we still have a freezer full of delicious mahi-mahi, we decided to throw this one back. Our first morning of passage began in a rather peculiar way. I was on watch with Jordan, and she spotted a small panga coming towards us. We were alarmed at first, as it's a pretty rare occasion that a boat comes up to you in the middle of nowhere, and from a distance, it was hard to tell if they were carrying fishing gear or something more ominous. And in the past, our experiences with people approaching us unannounced have been a bit on the dramatic side. The guy. Hey! Over here! Over here! Over here! But once they got a little closer, it was apparent they were just fishermen way offshore and they looked pretty desperate. They were completely out of water and it seemed pretty hungry as well. <laughs> I was a tiny bit nervous when they came up because I don't know they're coming in hot and then yeah, they're super friendly though. Yeah, they don't want some water. <laughs> What's going on? I'm gonna find a good staff to get on. <laughs> I'm these smallies. Yeah. 
Ja. Oh. Hier ist uh, Tamales. Oh, yeah. Tamales, Fresa. That's a hard life those guys live. They're like, what, 50 miles offshore right now. No water, no food, no food except yeah. fish. And uh, I don't know, I hope they got plenty of fuel. Yeah. They didn't look too like dangerous though. They were like, no, they, they, they look like friendly. fishermen. They're far like, away right. though, under the silhouette of some of the poles and stuff. Oh, you thought it was a gun or something? Yeah, it looked a little bit menacing. They were coming in very fast and I was like, oh God, what's happen and then they were like, hey! hey. They were like, oh, okay, cool. Tamales! Water, <laughs> yeah, I mean, typically you wouldn't see people that are super dangerous 50 miles offshore. They'd be yeah. a little bit closer to a coast or in like a, a strait or something like that where there's a lot of traffic. So I felt okay with it. So this is kind of like the conditions right now. Wind right on the nose. Yeah. Even on, this is Monday morning, it's still there, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of it has to do with the current and so I downloaded the currents. And so you can see like we're in this area right here, but as this current gets closer to land, look what it does. It sort of sweeps that way. And so if we tack fairly close to land, then the current will take us and sort of whip us around the corner. Oh. So we can just sit in that current. So I think maybe it makes sense to try and just either tack or just push straight through that. We'll go quite in and then we'll tack quite close to land. Okay. How is everybody feeling about some chili for dinner? Chili? Maybe some chili with a little avocado on the side or something? Whoa. Let's see. It's really nice to have like pre-cooked meals um, on passages like this so we don't have to be in the kitchen for too long. So I'm just gonna dig out some chili, heat it up, and that's it. Our third day at sea greeted us with more headwinds. The wind and waves had combined to make it a bumpy trip, and the constant rocking was taking its toll on everyone. Well, almost everyone. Playing with bubbles. Here come the bubbles. I think everybody's feeling quite uh, queasy. I know that I feel like it's like laying down sleeping, to be honest, not playing with bubbles, but that's okay. <laughs> Sierra's doing really well. The seasickness pills for kids that I give her, like, they really work wonders. Like I don't even give her that much. I just give her a half of one and it's plenty and she like... Mom. Okay. No, Mom. Oh, I'm gonna do it? Okay. Well, this is pretty much it. We're just motor sailing. I think it'll be another two days of this. Two days of this, so... Wish us good luck. <laughs> Hopefully I won't need to be inside for too much longer. Ooh, here I'm starting to feel really seasick, my love. Whoa, look at all these bubbles! Times are kind of tough out here. The wind is right on the nose. We got, what, eight, eight knots and uh, 
our plan worked last night to get around this point. It was tough. Getting around that point was uh, was pretty tough, but we did it. And um, honestly, I really don't know the plan. There's no plan. <laughs> we don't even know where we're going for sure. No, it's been tough though. Um, how many times I've said that? Can I tell you it's yeah. been tough? Did we mention it's been tough? And the wind is supposed to be probably just like this for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we have current with us, sometimes we have current against us, sometimes the swells get really big and they slow the boat and then we only go like two knots and sometimes there's no swells and then we go like five knots. You see, so like this is where we started tacking last night. Uh, and we tacked down and then we tacked up and then we went here, and then we went up here, and then the wind changed, and now we're motoring this way. Uh, I guess morale is high, or we're going entirely crazy. I'm not sure which one. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Ah! Mama, do it! Ah! We're going crazy over here. There's nobody around. We've been out here for days. Here she comes! Baby monster! Ow! Ow! Whoa! Can we get up now? Dictator? We got Twix, we got Milky Way Mini, we got Snickers, and we got Mars. There's no way we're giving this to Sierra. <laughs> Two o'clock. I'm just finishing my watch. Um, nothing's going on. Motor sailing into ten knots, right on the nose. Just same, same over here. <laughs> Currently 129 miles in Acapulco. Progress has been steady but slow. Uh, we've got current against us again, about another knot. We're straight into what little wind there is. I think we've got about six knots right on the nose. But we're good. We're going to do it. We're going to get there. Just got to be patient. And that's about it. It's the beginning of the new day. You checking the oil? Yeah, we've been motoring for so long. <laughs> Oil's great, and uh, now that it's daylight, I think I finally found out what's wrong with the alternator. When we turned on the engine last night, I felt like it was something like smoke or whatever, but. I don't know, I'm not convinced, but it might have been the alternator. It's not charging the battery, so we have to be conserving now. Oh, the belt! Why would that be? I don't know, it's not that old. It's not in bad shape. I mean, it is now, but... Yeah, but I can... normally, normally when a belt gets really bad, it'll start to like crack, and you can really see a lot of problems here. But well... Look at this. Look at all these spare belts. Oh, wow. Somebody planned ahead. <laughs> Bingo, that's one. We're back in business in the jiffy. In the jiffy. In the jiffy. What does that even mean? Yeah, where does that come from? Be, I think it's like from food. That's what, does, it, does anybody know what that means? You don't know what that means, do you? I have no idea. In the jiffy, it means like really quick. Amazing! We got wind. We're sailing. Pretty cool, right? Uh, which also means that I was able to turn the engine off for a while 
and let it cool down for a couple hours um, so I can put that belt on without burning the crap out of myself. I can do a little sailing collage since we haven't done any sailing really yet. <laughs> do a little filming of the sailing to document this amazing event. <laughs> water stopped, the GPS lost signal, none of the gauges worked, we had no wind instruments. And then the autopilot started doing this and I thought everything was fine. But now it just says no control head, no autopilots, no drive detected. I would give up all this stuff if I knew that the autopilot worked. I know. Like that's the most important thing. Yeah. We've never had any problems with it. It's been working for like 20, 30 minutes, and then all of a sudden yeah. it started freaking out again. So you can see where like we lost everything yeah. right there, and then it came back, and then it went away again, and it came back. It was really weird. This is one of the battery converters for the charger. Look at that. What is that? It's like something melted. Can somebody drive the boat, please? Okay, I gotta just disconnect this stuff. That's not good. I just gotta turn the power off to everything. Okay. So the whole boat's gonna go dark. Jeez, the whole system's freaking out. Okay, everything's gonna go dark. Just steer by yeah. the compass or wind or whatever, Jordan, okay? Yeah, sounds good. And... What is that? That's not good, huh? The thing oh got real hot. God. That's the, uh, it's a 24 volt to 12 volt converter. So this is what charges the starting battery, but now we got to figure out why the system is still not performing, right? But I bet you this is what caused the, the weirdness we saw last night. Yeah. That smoke we couldn't find, yeah. that we thought was the alternator belt. Yeah, the fans are kind of circling on and off, like they go really, really slow, and then they like power up again, and apparently the they shouldn't be on at all, which I'm kind of, like, don't understand. <laughs> I'm not very good with power. So, that thing, I don't know if I explained it good earlier, it's kind of hectic, but it takes 24 volts and it converts it to 12 volts to, ch to charge the starter battery. And that is, like, the first in line off of the alternator from the main engine. And so my theory is that when that thing overheated or internally shorted or whatever it did, it put an awful lot of load on the alternator the alternator like wore through the belt, broke the belt, and then it was still hooked up because I didn't see it until just now. And so this whole time it's been hooked up to the 24 volt system and probably like intermittently, like maybe shorting out inside, taking voltage, taking voltage, which has been playing with all the instruments, right? Because we're getting like low voltage alarms and stuff. So I've totally disconnected it. Um, and now the only thing we can do is wait Cross our fingers that that was actually it. So, you know what's weird is all the instruments and all the fans and the refrigerators were running just directly off the solar panels that whole time. So that's why the fans were going like in and out, and in and out. And that's why you're getting like low voltage alarms on all the. Yeah, it's so like if we had a shadow or something, it was. Yeah. All right, okay. well. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed and back to our lovely uh, sailing in semi the right direction. We depend on our navigation and autopilot systems more than ever since we have Sierra on board. 
even with Jordan helping me out with the watches, it's a pretty big task. And when we have equipment failures like this, it doesn't help matters at all. But it's absolutely amazing how just a little bit of wind, sailing, and dolphins can put us right back in the zone. Up next on Delos, Kaz and I share the story of how we first met. All the dirty beats on when I met Brian. No. Yeah. Blonde girls, and I'm like, oh, you guys want to come down <laughs> to the party on this powerboat we got here? Yeah. And we make landfall in Zihuatanejo, Mexico. It's our first time on land in five days. Ah, Zihuatanejo. But it's short lived. Because we looked at weather this morning, it's gonna be pretty hectic. So it's gonna be a good sail, I can tell you that much. Dang, I wanted to spend more time here. It's the life of a sailor. Dun, da, da, da. Ready for another Ready. installment of the Wall of Fame Shame? Yes. So I'm gonna pick the picture and Brian is gonna try to tell the story depending on what picture I pick. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay, close those eyes. Close those eyes, cover. Wait, it's done. I got your eyes, I got okay. your eyes. Uh, oh, oh wow. wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. Um, so this is from our time in Namibia, in Africa, and these are all our friends and this is a really cool time because this is right when uh, Lisa, Elizabeth, and Alex all joined the boat in Cape Town. Yeah. And so we sailed up the coast to uh, northern Namibia, Windhoek, and we met this crazy man right here, <laughs> the guy with the, the penis drawn on his forehead, Matt. <laughs> and we decided to do a random uh, drinking, uh, makeup, and dress-up party in Namibia. Yeah. And that, uh, that's the aftermath. <laughs> so funny. Um, I don't know God. what I have. Like what I have on, that's my captain's hat with like a pink scarf. And some eyeliner. Brady is some sort of a Johnny Depp inspired cowboy. <laughs> um, Lisa's just very cute. She's hey. always very cute. <laughs> Matt got drawn upon. Um, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And what, what do you do? What do you do? Uh, I have no idea. You're like a gypsy. Yeah, and have a little purse. I don't know what that is. <laughs> a little thing with hair in my situation. So many memories up I here. Know. Okay, that was a good one. Yeah. I like that memory. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye. You know, we can just trim her hair like a little bit like that. And right as Grace is gonna cut it, see so all like move, then we just like <laughs> So now she got a bob. Bob's <laughs> your uncle. Yee! <laughs> 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 <laughs>